This is one of the cheapest gaming PCs you can build at the moment. I'm gonna show you how to install all the parts, then I'm gonna show you how to install Windows and the necessary drivers, and then we're gonna test this exact PC in a bunch of popular games to see how it performs, and we're gonna test two graphics cards. So that being said, let's go over the parts I chose and show you how to install them after this sponsor segment. Own.tv is a big graphics webshop for streamers with things like complete overlay packages to personalize your stream, an emote maker that lets you customize your own emote and then buy the designs that would be most fitting for your stream or your discord group, a very similar badge maker, then pre-made sub badges, bit badges and emotes. Many of my community have already bought from them, I will add their link to the description and don't forget to use my code TVN for 50% of your price. At only $45, the Masterbox Q300L is one of the cheapest cases available. The dust filters on top and on the front are magnetic which allows for easy cleaning and there is a big window on the side of this case that can be removed by taking off these four screws. The case comes with one fan that's pre-installed which should be enough for a low budget gaming build. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B450M. The M stands for micro which means that it's smaller and also cheaper than a normal normal motherboard which is perfect for our budget build. The CPU I chose is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. The product name will simply say 1600 but if you look at the barcode it actually is the AF version. Just make sure when you buy the CPU that the product number says AF box and not AE box. This CPU should be more than good enough for 1080p gaming as well as 1080p streaming if that's something you're interested in. Just like most Ryzen CPUs this one also comes with a cooler. Be very careful not to touch the pre-applied cooling paste on the bottom of the cooler. To install the CPU just pull up this lever on the motherboard, take the CPU out of the package and be very careful when handling it because the pins on the bottom are very fragile. You will see a clear arrow on one corner of the CPU and then the same arrow on one corner of the CPU socket on the motherboard. Make sure those two are aligned, now gently pressure the CPU and then push down the lever and lock it into place. Place. Around the CPU you will see four screws and these are for attaching the CPU cooler. So you want to unscrew them all, then turn the cooler with the logo facing to the opposite side of the memory slots and then slowly drop it onto your CPU while aligning the four screws. After that you want to tighten the screws in a diagonal pattern and you want to do it with a few turns each time. And after that you can connect your first cable. You can take the CPU cable and then plug it in the CPU fan header on the top of the motor. Board. Next is the memory and we'll be using two 8GB sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is 3200MHz RAM which is perfect in combination with our Ryzen CPU. Something important to mention is that if you finish your build and you launch it for the first time, you will see that the memory isn't running at the full 3200MHz speed. After finishing this build I will show you how to fix that but make sure not to skip it because it's extremely important. Now since we only have two RAM sticks we're gonna use memory slot 2 and 4 on the motherboard so open these clips on both sides and then on the bottom of the RAM sticks you will see one shorter and then one longer side. You will see the same thing on the memory slots so just align the right sides and then just push it in until you hear a click on both sides. Now do the same thing for both memory sticks and then we can hide the CPU fan cable between the CPU and the memory that we just installed. Now for the storage we had to choose between a SATA HDD, a SATA SSD or an M.2 SSD. The biggest difference between these drives are the way they connect to your PC, the average price and then their speed which is very different. Both the SATA HDD which is very slow and then the SATA SSD which is much faster come with a SATA connector and by using the SATA cables that come with the motherboard they can be connected to these ports on the bottom right. Then the third option the M.2 drive, this one is extremely fast. Way too fast actually for normal stuff like loading games or copying files. However it is very useful to use it as a system drive which means installing windows on it because it will make everything you do on your PC just a bit more snappy. Installing it is very easy since you simply plug it into an M.2 slot on your motherboard and our motherboard has one of those. It's also important to know that these M.2 drives come in different speeds. 
Ours isn't amongst the fastest, but it's much cheaper than some of the other options and it's still way faster than a SATA SSD while being almost the same price. The only problem why you want to upgrade is that we only have one M.2 slot, so if you want to add more storage you will need to add a SATA SSD or a SATA HDD, but that one I think isn't worth it since it's pretty outdated to use in systems. The case I chose has room for one HDD and two SSDs, so that'll be fine for most average gamers. And now it's finally time to add the motherboard to the case. Removing the side panel is extremely easy and on the inside you will find one fan cable as well as a bunch of other cables that will be connected to the motherboard to make the front panel work. Now to install the motherboard we will need to get these cables out of the way so we're gonna remove the back panel of the case and then pull the cables back. In the box of the motherboard you will find this IO shield and we can click it in the case from the inside. And and after that you want to take the screws from the box of the motherboard and then find this type of screw because we will need to attach it to the inside of the case and you can just copy my positions you can just screw them in like this and after that you can simply position your motherboard with the holes on top of these screws and then use this other type of screw to secure the motherboard to the case. By the way, if you want to install a SATA SSD like this one, you will need the plastic bag that came with the PC case again. Inside you will find 8 of these screws and you will need 4 of them as well as 4 of these rubbers. You will need to attach them to the bottom of the drive and then make sure that the smaller side of the rubber ring is pointing away from the drive. When you do that for all of them, you can easily drop the drive in the 4 holes on the back of the case and then push it sideways to lock it into place. Next, we can attach the case fan to this connector on the motherboard. You will see the text system fan 1 and you can simply plug it in right there. Next we're gonna take these cables that we brought to the back because again these will make the front panel work. You can stuff them through the hole on the bottom and the box of your motherboard will also come with two SATA cables. We will need one of them to connect to the SATA SSD that we installed in the case and then also stuff that through the same hole and plug it in one of the SATA connectors on the bottom right of the motherboard. You will see a connector with the text audio written under it and you guessed it right, right here we can plug in the audio cable. Next you want to take this beefy cable and plug it in the USB 3.0 port and then after that we need to connect all these small cables. The power LED positive goes on the top left of these connectors, then the power LED negative goes next to that, the power switch cable goes next to that, by the way this will make the on and off button work, then this HDD LED goes on the bottom left, make sure you align the plus and the minus and the re reset switch goes next to that. And then next the power supply. The one I chose is 550 watts which is more than enough plus some room for a minor upgrade and it is non-modular which means that it was cheaper but that you can't detach the cables that you aren't using. Usually attaching a power supply to a case is very quick and easy but this case made it kind of a hassle. You first need to detach the frame that's attached to the inside, then you need to attach that to the power supply and after that you can put the power supply supply in the case and then attach it from the back again. So after that you want to stuff all these cables through the hole on the bottom to the back of the case and then you want to look for the biggest cable because that's what's gonna power our motherboard. You will need to lead it through the hole on the top and then you want to simply plug it into this big connector on the right side of the motherboard. One of the power connectors can be attached to the SSD on the back and on the top left of the motherboard you will see a connector that will power the CPU. You want to take this connector that says CPU on the side. Then you want to stuff that through the hole on the top right of the back of the case and well plug it in. Now for the GPU I included two options in this video and there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that I just wanted to provide people with an upgrade in case they had some extra budget and the second reason is that this upgraded GPU which by the way is still a budget one has an NVENC chip which will allow you to record games or stream games without losing any FPS while gaming. The process of installing these GPUs is exactly the same for both of them since none of these two require power from your power supply you just need to remove the connector and then plug them in the motherboard. The one you see me installing here is the GTX 1050 Ti and this is the one with the NVENC chip. If you plan on live streaming then this is one of the cheapest GPUs that will get you into the game. Then after that it's time for cable management and most people hate this but it's actually not that hard at all. The main goal is routing all these cables around these holes because otherwise they will be visible from the front. I'm not gonna do a whole commentary for this, just attach a bunch of cables to each other 
other and attach them in a way that they won't be too thick so that the back plate can be attached to the case again. And then after that it's time to install Windows and the necessary drivers and I'll guide you through it really quickly because there are a few really important things that you can't miss. By the way, I will also do benchmarks after that. You will want to go on another PC and then download the Windows 10 installation media. Once you launched it, choose the second option. Next, select USB flash drive, then plug a USB or an SD card with an SD card reader into your PC, select it here, and then once you click next, your installation drive will get prepared. Then you want to plug that into your new PC, turn it on and hope that it won't explode, then go through the installation and if you have a key, you can enter it here. Just continue going through these pages and then you will need to choose custom install windows only and then choose the drive on which you want to install windows. I see drive 0 two times here because that's the SSD we installed on the back of the PC and I just took this out of another system so Windows is still installed on this. You can see that drive 1 is almost 500 gigabytes and this is the NVMe SSD that we installed on the motherboard with the goal of being our system drive so we're gonna select this and then click next. Then Windows will start installing and after that Bill Gates will act like he's trying to help you to set up your system but in actuality he's asking you permission to store your whole life on his servers in 16 different ways. Now I quickly want to go to the task manager because as you can see when I go to memory our RAM isn't running at the full speed. This is something many people miss when building a new PC and we're gonna fix this in a minute after installing the necessary drivers. Go to the product page of the motherboard, click on support on the top right and then change your OS to Windows 10. Now you should download the most recent Realtek audio driver, then your chipset driver and at last the LAN driver. Now you can unzip the three folders we just downloaded and then just install these drivers. Now go to the Nvidia driver page, then look up your GPU depending on the one you chose and then download that driver and install it too. Now the last but very important thing is making your memory run at the intended speed. For this you will need to restart your PC and then spam the delete button to go into your BIOS, then go to the advanced memory settings and change the XMP profile on top to profile 1. Now click save and exit and exit setup and when your PC restarts you will see that the memory is now running at the full speed. And now it's finally time to discuss the benchmarks I did both for this 1030 and the 1050 Ti that's currently in the system. By the way, if you're interested in all this stuff, you might want to follow my Instagram because there I post behind the scenes. So if you want to see that, you might want to follow me there. I will show all the results of the benchmarks on the screen one by one, but it's very important to know that the low, medium and high quality settings of games aren't always perfect. They give a decent representation on how the card handles the game, but if you find the right custom settings, you will always find something that looks like the game is on medium or high settings, while it's actually actually on low settings with just a few things tweaked. I also tested the lower performing competitive games on 720p and 900p because in those games getting more FPS is more important than how it looks. And by the way both of these settings actually look pretty decent. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more gaming builds, streaming builds, PC setups, RGB, cool gadgets then don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like this video because that helps a lot in the algorithm. Thank you so much for watching, I hope I will see you in the next video or maybe in this one next to me. Have a nice day.